All right, hi there, boys and girls. Um, this is Mrs. Nicholas, and we are gonna be doing a painting together for the Cookies and Canvases project that the uh, PTA is putting on. So I wanna first say thank you to the PTA for organizing this event. I'm really excited to be a part of it and do um, a painting with you guys. And so um, let's just get right into it. We're gonna be doing a painting of a snowman. Um, so we're gonna be trying to replicate a picture um, similar to this. So don't worry if it doesn't end up looking exactly like this. I can guarantee that my picture, my painting, will not look exactly like this either. Um, so we're just gonna uh, make a snowman and however it looks, it's gonna be awesome. So I'm just gonna kind of set this off to the side so we can see it and work from it and keep it as a guide. Um, some other things that I have, um, if you guys got the supplies from the PTA, you would have also gotten a um, canvas. Like you can see here, I have my canvas and then also your paints. Uh, these are acrylic paints. I kind of took mine out of the little palette there. And um, I'm also, I grabbed myself a paper plate, which you could do, um, you know, to put your paints on as you're working. We were also provided these adorable little brushes, these rainbow brushes. And so if you have those, you wanna keep those on hand. I have a bucket of water. You could use anything as your um, container of water, a cup or whatever you have on hand. And I also grabbed myself a paper towel to work with, um, to you know, dry my brush and things in between. And so um, I'm just gonna get started. We're gonna start off with the sky. So you can draw with a pencil, you know, exactly where you think you want the sky to come down to and have the land then begin or as um, some of you have learned in class, this, this line right here where the sky and the land meet, that's called the horizon line. So you figure out exactly how far down you want yours. It looks to be a little bit more than halfway down. And so I'm just gonna quickly draw a line across there to show where I want my sky to be. So I'm just gonna put that right there. And if I end up painting a little bit further down, that's fine, um, or a little bit further up, that's fine. Just kind of like a guide. And I'm not gonna add in any other details at this time. And for the sky, instead of putting my, my paint on the paper plate, I'm actually going to put them um, right on the canvas because I need a lot of paint up there. So I wanna make sure that I'm able to um, cover that whole area and so I'm just gonna squirt some paint right onto the canvas and then I'm gonna grab my largest brush and I'm just gonna start spreading around that paint and if you need to extend your paint a little bit you could just dip your um, water just like dip it in the um, paintbrush in the water like one time and extend it. So our first goal is to try to cover this um, top sky area with as much paint as possible to get it all blue. Don't really worry about the sides right now. We wanna make sure we have enough paint for our picture before we worry about the sides. And remember that we're gonna need a lot of blue for the whole entire thing. So, you know, you don't wanna use up all of the blue right now. So you wanna kind of, you're gonna kind of have to keep in mind like how much you have and then how much you're gonna need. So like ration it out. Don't squeeze out the whole entire bottle just for the sky. Whoops, I dropped my cap, that's okay. I'll get that later. And you know, usually you guys are used to seeing videos, um, demonstration videos with me in class where I edit everything and I'll just show you a chunk of um, how I'm making something and then I'll edit that out and shorten it for you. But for this, I am just gonna paint the entire thing right along with you so you are able to paint your entire painting right along with me. 
And so again, if I feel like an area isn't really blending well or moving or I need to get some more paint kind of extended into that area, all I'm doing is I'm taking my brush and I'm just gonna dip it really quickly in the water. I'm not adding a ton of water. If I did that, um, you know, my paints would get super watery. I don't want super watery paints. I just want paints that are um, able to extend out a little bit. So they're just like watered down the teeniest, tiniest bit. And then I'm gonna turn my canvas to the side and I'm gonna do that same thing with the water so that I'm able to get a more solid line right here. And I'm using this the end of this um, paintbrush, this straight edge of this paintbrush to help me get a straight edge along where the sky and the land meet, that horizon line. And the surface of the canvas is really textured. And so I'm spending some time just kind of making sure that the paint is pushed into that texture so that it looks like it's finished whenever I'm done painting. It doesn't have this like unfinished look to it. And now I'm just gonna go back and I'm going to kind of even out my brush strokes here so that there's not all these little like marks. See all these little marks here? I wanna try to even those out. Now, if you prefer your sky to look a little bit different. Maybe you want um, a little bit of a lighter blue in some areas, then by all means, guys, you can add, um, there is another, it's a, um, uh, that's not it, cobalt blue. Um, you guys are welcome to add a lighter blue in the sky and you know blend in some of that here and there if that's the look that you're going for. You know, this is your painting. You absolutely do not have to make it look exactly like the picture or exactly like mine. I am going to stick with, I'm gonna, like I said, try to make mine very similar to the picture here, but you know, there are no rules. You do not have to do that. This is not for a grade, right? So feel free to make it your own. And this paint, this is acrylic paint. Probably should have said this at the beginning, but acrylic paint um, does not come out of your clothes. You guys probably have heard me talk about acrylic paint, sixth grade at least, um, in class. It does not come out of your clothes. So you wanna be very careful, um, you know, with where you're putting it. Uh, maybe wear a paint shirt while you're doing this or wear an apron or something. And acrylic paint does dry in the air. So once this dries, uh, I can't really go back and make, I cannot go back and make changes to it at all. So uh, I wanna work with that area. And then once I'm happy with it, I can let it be. But if I'm not happy with it, I can't go back and fix it. Um, I can always add on top of it, but I cannot go back and fix this particular layer exactly um, as I could while it's still wet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more here and then I'm gonna move on from the sky. You know, as it's drying, I'm noticing, maybe I could use a little bit more blue here and there. Okay, I feel like that looks pretty good. Um, I am gonna clean my brush. So acrylic paint, when it dries, it doesn't come out of your clothes. And it also, if you let it dry 100% in your brush, it will not come out of your brush. So your brush will then be ruined. And so to make sure that that doesn't happen, you know, clean your brushes as you go. Don't just kind of set them off to the side. And the way that I, I um, you know, talk about cleaning brushes in class is just like this. I bounce them off the bottom of the container and this really forces that paint out of the bristles. And so then I can just press my bristles on the side of the container and you can see now they're, it's all clean. And I can get off excess water on my paper towel. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the snow. And I know that the canvas is obviously white and the snow is white. However, we are going to add in some uh, 
blue paint into it. So you can see on the image that we're working off of here, you can see that there is a shadow underneath the snowman right here. And so there's like kind of blue streaks here and there. So, so this value here, this shadow that's, you know, showing that the snowman's three dimensional, he's casting a shadow because the sun is up here. We want to make sure that we're able to, to add that and make it look painterly, add all these beautiful brush strokes. And so, you know, to do that, we have to add white paint onto that part of our canvas. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to add white paint and then I am actually, I'm going to kind of like sketch out and it's okay if my snowman ends up in a slightly different spot, but I'm going to put really lightly. Here is where my snowman is going to go. One, two, and like I said, that might change a little bit. I'm going to have to go back into the sky and do some things, but that is going to help me whenever I go to do the shadows um, on the uh, snow right here, know exactly where I'm supposed to put them. Because if you check this out, right, the shadow for the, the bottom of the snowman is gonna be the darkest right underneath it. And then it's gonna kind of feather out and get a little bit lighter as we go farther away from it. So, um, so let's move on to that area. So let's go to some white, ah, here's my white. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of squeeze some paint out. And I am going to start moving that around. And notice my brush strokes. I'm going right to left, side to side, I'm using horizontal brush strokes here. And I'm gonna go over that area where I drew, like I'm not gonna go around my snowman circles at this time. I am gonna get a little bit of water. Just delicately dipped my brush in the water. And notice how quickly I'm working because I wanna be able to blend in some blues into this white and I can't do it if it's dry. It has to be wet. Okay, so now I'm gonna take um, the, my cobalt blue, which is that slightly lighter blue, and I, I just squirted the teeniest bit on there. I'm gonna add a little bit of my shadow down here, and then I'm gonna go up here and kind of feather that out. And I'll add more there in just a second. I'm gonna clean my brush. I feel like I got a little bit too much of that blue down here in this corner. I'm gonna kind of take a little bit of it off. I might even take my paper towel and wipe a little bit of it off. And I'm gonna add a little bit more white. Overall though, I think that that is looking really nice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ultramarine blue, the darker blue. I'm gonna put a little bit on a paper plate and I'm gonna go in with it on the edge of my snowman here. Just a little bit. create that shadow and we will go back and touch that up and make it look super nice. We can add a little bit of that blue down here too. And I think I'm just gonna add a little bit more white up here, up here. 
I want to add a little bit more white right here on the edge to make sure that we can still see the, the separation of the sky and the ground because if I have too much blue on the ground and then I have too much blue in the sky, it's like, well, where's the, where, is, where does one end and one begin? I think I'm gonna grab a smaller brush at this time. I'm gonna go with this little green brush and I'm just gonna get a little bit more of that blue and just pull it out. So darker right up against the edge and pull it out just like delicately. And like I said, we'll go back and add to that a little bit later. Okay, so our sky looks like it's pretty much dry. It's definitely not completely dry. I can see some shiny wet parts up over here, but it is dry enough that I think we can go back and do the swirls um, in the sky, like the sun and then like these lines coming out here. And so, um, you know, if I'm staying true to what I see on the paper here, I see um, some white, some yellow and some lighter blue. So I'm gonna put out those colors on my paper plate here. And then, uh, hmm, let's see, which brush should I use? I might stick with this green brush. We'll see how that goes. And then I might adjust if I need to. So um, I'm first gonna start now. I want, obviously we have the head of the snowman here and then we have the um, beginning of that swirl starting here. And so I'm just like very delicately going to start swirling that on the paper and swirling around. And the key here is just like lightly, grab a little bit of water, lightly going on the surface of the canvas because it's just like the hint of it, right? It's, it's just supposed to look almost like wind. Oops. Or the sun's rays, I suppose. So it's not supposed to be perfect. Now we are gonna add yellow, um, but you know, I just added some blue. And so if you know about color mixing, which you should, if we aren't careful and we don't uh, if we over blend our yellow into our blue, we will accidentally make green. Don't want that to happen. I'm gonna grab a bigger brush. I want to make sure that the uh, blue is dry before I go back in with the yellow. So I was going to do that right now, but that would just be a bad idea if I want my paper to not turn yellow. All right, I feel like that looks good. Except for adding the yellow, I didn't do that part, that's okay. I'm going to make sure I clean all my brushes. Okay. Okay, so now at this time, I am gonna start to go in on the actual snowman. And so I'm gonna actually just squirt some paint right here on the canvas. And I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use this orange brush and I'm gonna start creating those now, when you go to make the outside of the snowman, if it looks really bumpy like this, dip your brush just very gently in the tiniest bit of water. You don't want a ton of water because we want our paints to be pretty thick here so that it can cover up the blue. And so that little bit of water will allow you to create that sharper edge.
Now, on the edge of my snowman over here, you almost can't see the difference between the edge of the snowman and the edge of the um, where the snow begins. But don't worry about that because we will add a little bit of yellow there um, just to kind of like look like the sun is hitting off that side of the snowman. I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush. So I'm painting in a circle, so I'm moving my brush in a circular kind of motion to get the brush strokes all evened out there. And you know, I put these globs of paint here, but if I don't work quickly enough, they will start to dry. So I gotta make sure I'm moving along. So I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna dip in the tiniest bit of water to get that edge. bit of water and don't worry if your snowman is not you know three perfect circles think about when you make a snowman outside in the snow can you ever really get a perfect circle no or a perfect sphere when you're making that snowman no way That looks pretty good. Okay, so at this time, I'm gonna clean both my brushes that I had going for that step. I ran out of paper towels, so I'm gonna go grab a new paper towel. And now I'm gonna add the yellow on the side of the snowman because I really want that to be blended in. So you can see that on this image here, hold it up. We're gonna add the yellow and the blue. And so my snowman is wet right now. So this is ideal. And if he starts to dry, that's okay. I can just add a little bit more white um, and kind of blend that into there. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna go with my green brush on this one. And uh, I want my brush to just be a little bit wet and I'm gonna get the teeniest, tiniest little bit of yellow because here's the deal. If you add too much, it might look weird. But if you don't add enough, you can always add more. That's super easy, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go right on the edge of the snowman over here. Okay, I definitely need a bigger brush. I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna go back up to my red brush. But again, it's a bigger brush. I wanna be really careful I don't accidentally add too much yellow paint. I just have the teeniest, tiniest little bit on the edge there. I'm lifting my white paint on accident, that's not good. Maybe I'll get a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. There we go, that's the ticket. Squirt out a little bit more white paint. So it's just a hint of yellow. I'm gonna take this extra white and go back on top of my snowman here. Kind of make them a little bit darker. I can see too much of that blue coming through. Okay. 
Okay, so on the right hand side, there's almost like a shadow. So the, the left side, that's like the sun, which we're gonna add yellow in the sun. And then on the, the right hand side, there is like a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add my white to my paper plate. I'm gonna get the tiniest bit of water on my brush and I'm gonna take a lot of white and a little bit of that blue. I just kind of mixed it a little bit so it's a much lighter blue, it's a tint of blue. And I'm just gonna add my shadow showing up there we go so you can see that there are some other brush strokes on the snowman so if you want to add A little bit more blue or not as much you can make them look kind of textured so I'm just kind of playing in the paint getting it kind of looking like painterly like seeing all those cool brush strokes okay so I feel like I'm ready to move on let's see what should I do next um, I still think the blue in the sky is wet. So if I went back and added my yellow, I would end up just making, you know, green, a green sun, which I'm still, I'm not interested in that. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to the trees for now. We're gonna let the snowman dry. We're gonna go on to these trees. So if you look in this image here, there are five trees and they are very triangular. So feel free to just make your trees little triangles if you like that look or um, if you are in sixth grade and you remember us painting trees earlier this year and you wanna to try to do something like that, you could do that. It's kind of like up to you and up to your style. Um, I think I'm gonna go with, and they're just, they're blue. I'm gonna use the darker blue, the ultramarine. I'm gonna squeeze some out on my plate and I'm gonna grab a brush here. I think I'm going to go with my orange brush to start. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just a line for like where, imagine where the trunk is going to go. And let's look at the size of these. Now, if you guys want to make your trees bigger, awesome, go for it. I want to keep mine pretty small. There are two on the right side, three on the left side, because there's less space here. So I think I'm going to make one right here. One is gonna go right here. I don't know if you guys can see that line. It's there, I promise. Okay, oh yeah, I can see it. Okay, um, and then there are three others on the other side. So I like to plan things out first. I am a planner. And so I wanna know exactly where these things are going before I move forward and start painting them and realize, oh darn, I forgot to do this, that, or the other. So I'm trying to plan it out first, avoid errors. And then you might notice that I'm making them get slightly smaller as they get further away. So this one's gonna be bigger, medium, smallest, because that one's supposed to be further in the distance. This one's bigger, and this one's gonna be smaller because it's further in the distance. Okay, so, um. I would like to add a little bit of black. I'm gonna squeeze this out on my paper plate here. Now, I cannot express to you how powerful the black is going to be. If you add too much of it to your blue, it will take over the blue completely and you will not even see blue, you will just see black. So don't add too much. Okay, so I want to, I'm gonna start with this guy back here. I'm making it triangular. So I'm just gonna make like the shape, that triangular shape there. And I'm going to just use blue first and I'm gonna make mine kind of textury. So I'm just doing like a, I'm sticking inside the shape of that triangle that I just made. If you missed this, I'm gonna do it again. And then I'm just going over it and I'm gonna add the teeniest, tiniest little bit of blue to my black or black to my blue. And look, mine even started to get kind of taken over. I gotta add more blue to it, but it's easier 
guys to add less to start, trust me. All right, if you missed that tree, don't worry. I'm gonna go over a tree again. I don't like how I can kind of see through it. I'm gonna clean my brush. Let's go again. I'm gonna add more blue, I'm running low on blue. Okay, no water on my brush. Okay, first I'm gonna start with just a teeny little bit of blue on the edge of my brush. And I'm going to first just make the shape of that triangle. So it's a very tall, skinny triangle. Okay, so I had that line for the tree trunk. You can see that here. And then I just made the shape of a triangle here on my paper. Now I'm gonna fill it in. So I just grabbed some more blue paint and I'm just gonna fill it in. I want to put it on a little thick because I, for whatever reason, my um, last tree was almost like the paint almost seemed see-through. Not interested in that. I want my paint to be opaque. I don't want to be able to see through it into the snow. I'm going to do that for my other three trees over here. So if you need to rest your finger, don't do it on, um, don't rest your wrist on the snowman because it's probably still wet, but you're your snow down here should be somewhat dry. So here's my triangles. In. I don't really like the way that this one turned out. I'm just going to go back over it with the blue. And I'm going to go back over this one again. A little bit more blue. Now, do you want your trees to be green instead of blue? Go for it. Right, we have this beautiful green that you are welcome to use instead of blue if that's the look that you prefer. There are no rules, right? You could you could skip the trees if you don't like the trees, or you could make 20 trees on here if you like that look, right? This is your painting, so you know you can follow along with me as much as you like, but you're not required, right? This is not something for a grade. You're not required to do anything. Even if this wasn't glass, I wouldn't make you guys do trees uh, in any particular way. You can do them how you'd like. Okay, so I am gonna go back in with a little bit of black. So I have here on my paper plate, I mixed some blue and black. It's kind of like dried up. So I'm just gonna tap my brush in some water and kind of get it moving a little bit again. And I'm gonna take that, so it's just like a darker blue, it's a shade of blue. And on my um, one side of my trees, this is confusing to me, on the image they have the, the darker blue, it looks to me like on the left side of the trees, but if the sun is over here on the left side, the shadow should be on the opposite side. So I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna add my shadow on the right side of the trees. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna add a little bit of black there. I'm gonna, I'm kind of tapping because it seems like every time I try to like brush my brush, I'm lifting paint and I don't want that to happen. I'm just kind of, I'm tapping, very gently, just tapping my brush.
All right, maybe we'll come back to the trees in a little bit and do some more with them. But right now I think they're too wet to really continue. So I'm looking at the sky. The sky looks like it is pretty dry. I, I even just touched it, right? And it seems like it's very, very dry. And so um, that's good because now I wanna add the yellow back in there, um, back on top. Again, we didn't wanna add the yellow before because it would just simply turn green. So I'm gonna take my, I think, I think I'm actually gonna go with my red brush. You could use a smaller brush if you want. Make sure it's totally clean. I'm gonna get um, just a tiny bit of water on my brush so that the, this yellow paint that I put out a while ago, it's like, it's not dry, but it's just like, it's not as um, starting to dry. So I'm just gonna kind of get it so it's a little bit more liquidy, not too much. And I can, I can add some more white in here too. Let's see where my white go. Kind of chill out the white or the yellow a little bit, kind of tone it down. So there's yellow, but it's not like, wow, really intense. So I'm just gonna do a couple of brush strokes. So I'm using the tip of my brush, like the edge of my brush, and I'm just kind of like bringing it around, trying to stay within this circular can add lines. You cannot do as many lines as, as I have here, as the image that I'm working from has. You can do different colors. Maybe you want yours to be purple. You know, we didn't get a purple. You could mix one, right? You could mix red and blue, make yourself a purple, right? Be creative. I think that looks pretty good. Now that I have this on my, my brush, if I wanna go back and touch anything up on the edge of my snowman here where the yellow was, I can do that. Okay, so uh, let's see here. One thing I'd like to do, well, I don't know, maybe I'll let those dry a little bit more. Um, I think maybe now would be a good time to start on some details on the snowman. Um, maybe like the scarf and nose and all of those things. I'm gonna set this paper plate aside. I'm probably still gonna use it a little bit, but I'm gonna start with a fresh paper plate. If you have one, if you don't have one, you could absolutely continue to use the one that we were using. I just so happen to have one here, so I might as well take advantage of that and have more room for my paints. I'm gonna get out some red, um, some orange, and I have some black on my other paper plate. I'm just gonna kind of scoot it over. So red, orange. So here's my black from my other paper plate. I don't want to waste that. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is I think first would be a good idea to kind of sketch a hat. So I'm going to have my hat. You can see it's like, um, the brim of it kind of comes down on the head right here and then goes up and out. Do you want your hat to look different than that? Great. You can draw your hat, make it look however you want. It absolutely does not have to look like how it looks here. I'm gonna attempt to make mine look similar, but you know, it's probably not gonna come out exactly like that, and that's okay. You may or may not even be able to see this pencil on my um, canvas here, but that's okay. The, the person that has to see it is you. Uh, you know, you need to see your own drawing. You don't really need to see mine. You just know that I'm sketching mine out. And obviously my sky is dry. That's why I'm able to, to draw on there. Okay. 
let me show you. I don't know how well you can see that. There are some very faint lines on there. And now I'm ready to get started on it. So I'm actually gonna add in the red stripe in the middle first. And I, now we're really gonna take advantage of these nice, beautiful little detail brushes. So I'm just gonna get a teeny bit of red paint on my brush. And now the reason why I'm not doing the black first is because I don't know that the black would totally, um, that you'd be able to even cover the black with the red. I'd have to wait like steps drying and it's like, I might as well just not try to layer them. Now, do you wanna make a different color than red little stripe on the hat here? Go for it guys, you can do whatever you want. Do you not even wanna add a hat? Do you wanna add a different kind of hat, like a snow hat versus like, this is like a little top hat, right? Like that typically see Frosty with. Now I have red on my brush, so I'm just gonna take advantage of that. And I'm gonna go with the scarf next. And so I'm just gonna kind of bring that right in here. This is really making me think of that snowman that we drew together for one of our Zooms right before the holidays. So there's the part under the neck. And now I can add in like the little ends. I don't want to put those off to the side because as you can see we're going to put the buttons down the center but if you put them right in the middle that's okay all right now i can always go back and add another layer that um red doesn't seem very bright i think that's just kind of like this red it's kind of a deeper red which is totally fine um, you could mix some white in with it, but then you'd take it to pink. So I'm just gonna go with what we have and layer it. There, that helped brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so now I am pretty happy with my start of my hat and my scarf. So I'm gonna move to, um, ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna draw in where I want the eyes to go. So then I can also draw in where I want the nose and the mouth to go. So I want my eyes here and my mouth is like here. Okay, so my nose is gonna go here. Now, if you're brave and you just wanna like paint the nose where you want the nose to go go for it I'm not being quite as brave today okay okay so um I think I'm gonna go with the black next I'm gonna use this same little blue detail brush and I cleaned it off really well I'm gonna go in with some black I'm gonna go to the hat and then we'll go on to all those other details So I just tapped my brush in the tiniest little bit of water just because my, um, my black wasn't gliding 
quite like I wanted it to, to get that straighter edge of the hat. Part of it done. Tap in some water, get a little bit of liquid so it can glide. Now feel free to turn your canvas. I'm trying to just turn me I'm just going to a different spot and so that I'm at an angle that's more comfortable for my hand to be moving across the painting but um, so that you guys can keep like seeing but you're welcome to like flip your canvas around so that it's easier for you to um, paint right make it easy for yourself so you can make it look as nice as you possibly can Right, so the top hat is done. Now I can work on the eyes. And um, to get like a really nice, like specific little dot like that, I would dip your brush in a little bit of water, like literally just tap it in the water. And then I have um, some watery black here. And then I can just go in and make the eyes. And then, you know, I have black on my brush. Why don't I um, just set that down for one second and you can either just be really brave and just draw in the arms if you want, or if you prefer to like sketch them out, I would just do lines and then whenever you go to paint over them, you'll make them into shapes. So I'm gonna do one out like this and then two little branches coming off the ends and then same thing over here. Out, oops, stuck my finger in the hat. So again, I have black on my brush already. And so I'm just gonna go ahead. And then my tip for the branches is if you make them go smaller at the end, that will make them look more realistic as a branch. But if that doesn't happen for you, that's okay. So a little bit bigger at the bottom here. Now, is your paint not gliding across the surface? Try taking your, um, your paint, tapping it in the water, bringing that water over onto your paper plate. And then, and practice on a piece of paper if you feel like it's not working out for you. All right, moving on to the nose. Getting just a little bit of orange on my brush. And now I can just fill in where I had this guy planned out. Um, I do believe that we have an even smaller detail brush I'm gonna switch to. We have this purple one. And I just took my brush. I went, I tapped it in the water. Let me show you how I did that. So tap. And then move it around with my orange, kind of get it not like liquidy, but just it's easier to spread it on your uh, canvas here.
Um, there are some details on the nose, but I want that to be dry. So let's see, what can we go back? Ah, we can go back and do a couple different things. One is we can add some little shadows underneath the trees now that this area is dry. We can even touch up the trees now that they're dry. We can add those details on the nose then. Um, and then final step will be to add the snowflakes in the air. So I'm gonna go back to my other paper plate. I'm gonna set that one aside. And uh, I'm gonna grab my green brush, clean it off, get a tiny bit of water. Actually, I'm gonna add more of this ultramarine blue to my paper plate. And I'm gonna go in and I feel like some of these were almost, like I could see the snow right through them. So I'm just gonna touch them up a little bit And then I can go and add a little shadow underneath. So what I'm gonna do is take some white and take a little bit more of that cobalt blue. And then we're also gonna kind of add on to this um, shadow underneath the snowman. So I'm going to just mix together my white and my cobalt blue just a teeny bit. Get a, a little tint of blue. So start lighter. You can always add on if you want. And I'm just going to add just a little line by all of these. And maybe like I said, you can make it a little bit darker if you want. even add in the ultramarine blue and then I'm gonna take some of that ultramarine blue and I'm gonna go right along the edge of our snowman and you guys do not have to do this. If you are happy with how your shadow is, I'm just gonna kind of like fan it out a little bit. So I'm just lightly going over it. So, so acrylic paint is really good, um, <coughs> excuse me, at adding layers. So you can, you know, like let it dry, go back, add some more let it dry, go back, add some more. So that's good if you like make a mistake, right? You can always just let it dry, go back <coughs> and add some more over top, excuse me. All right, so my nose still looks like it's drying. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the shadows down here. I think that those turned out like really cool. Um, you know, if you guys wanted to add any more brush strokes in the snow, or anything like that, you're more than welcome to add more, as many as you like. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, get some just plain white. And I'm also going to get my, one of my detail brushes. I think I'm gonna use this blue one. I think that that's gonna be really good. So we have just two things left. We have the snowflakes. I don't know if you guys can see those on this um, image that we're working off of. And then we're also gonna add the detail of the um, carrot. Okay, but the nose has to be dry to do that. So I am gonna, I got some white on my plate. I'm gonna just tap the white in the water. 
I'm just gonna kind of like mix it up in here a little bit. So that's, I'm just kind of getting like a little bit of like watery white. And then I'm just gonna kind of randomly add snowflakes. You don't wanna add snowflakes, you don't have to add snowflakes. You wanna add a billion snowflakes, cool, go for it. If you wanna add five, do that. Do what you like. And so I'm just gonna kind of like drop them all on here randomly. I feel like my snowman's face was a little bit too blue right here. I'm gonna go over that while I have white on my brush. I added a little too much blue there whenever I added that blue for the shadow. Okay, back to snow. A lot of kids are really into splattering paint to make the snow look like snow. Make sure you ask your family if that's okay to do. It's one thing to do it in the art room where the table can be easily cleaned up. It is a whole other thing if you're in your house. So make sure you're asking to do that. Even add some snow right on the snowman. You can't really see that one. be almost done here adding my, you know some some spots on the ground you really can't even see it so it's like I mean I don't know you can add them if you want I guess I can kind of see them here oh, looking good okay okay so I think I'm done adding snow maybe I might oh, there is one or two on the snowman's head so maybe I'll add that it looks very nice do like that yeah okay now I'm gonna go back to my other paper plate which I have some more black on I'm gonna switch brushes back to this little teeny purple one and I'm gonna get I'm gonna dip it in just the tiniest bit of water I'm gonna go into my black and I'm gonna twirl it in the black so that I can get just a little bit on there and then I'm gonna go, I don't know why my brush is splitting right there, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go, we're gonna add a line on the bottom. And then we're gonna add a couple of lines going up the carrot. brush is just not working out for me. Okay, switch to this yellow brush. And that is just a really teeny tiny detail. Maybe I'll even add one more at the end. So we have, I think, all the details. Scarf, eyes, carrot, mouth, buttons, arms, hat, and we did the snow. And so I think that that is it. Man, it 
I think it looks pretty close to what I was going for. Again, you get, you guys do not have to have it look just like mine or just like the image that I was working from. I'm sure whatever you guys made, it looks amazing. If you guys would like to upload these to Artsonia, I will put a file on there um, called Cookies and Canvases, and you can upload the snowman or the penguin, whichever one you guys have decided to do so that um, Mrs. Roberts and I are able to check out your, your artwork. So um, good luck, can't wait to see your art, and um, thanks for painting with me, bye.